Hello friends, welcome into another episode of Groomers Take, this is episode 105. The Toronto Maple Leafs lose to the Islanders in overtime. It was a good game, I thought Sorokin kind of stole the show, the Leafs out shooting the Islanders, 31, 32, 25, something like that. Uh, Sorokin looked really, really good. Uh, Shalgren was okay, you know, he was okay, he was kind of Reimer in Detroit, but uh, you can't give away a puck like that, that kind of sucks, that just late in the third like that, terrible, terrible giveaway. Um, I think Toronto gave the puck away a little bit too much. The giveaways absolutely kill you. And the giveaways in overtime especially. Uh, it's, it's a little bit frustrating watching the cuteness in overtime. I feel that they have a bunch of skill, obviously. But when Marner carries that puck in and he makes a play, but that play makes him be the last guy back and then he tries the drop pass, I think it's just a little bit too cute at times. You got to remember who your opponent is. The Islanders aren't that cute like that. They kind of just go out there. They're strong, they're balanced, and they win games. So know who your opponent is and maybe sometimes don't do that. And ultimately, I believe it cost them because 20, 30 seconds later, the puck was in the back of the net. Um, hit somebody. The Leafs don't hit a lot. Uh, I think when Dubas brought in this bottom six pieces in the offseason, he thought he was going to be getting a lot more. Uh, hasn't worked out that way. We've seen some moves made. Abe Kubel gone. Uh, Simmons put on waivers. I think that was mostly because of the Riley injury. Um, but just hit somebody. I think when you hit when you hit the other team, when you finish a check, the puck is going to end up on your stick a lot more than it doesn't. So I hit somebody. Um, Morgan Riley out till Christmas. This is a bad one. The Leafs are already hurt. I think Brody might return next week, which is good. But when you like, we'll we'll take a look here at what the what the defensive pairings will look like going into a red hot New Jersey Devils tonight on a Wednesday night great game but Morgan Riley out that hurts we're going to talk more about the Leafs and the blue line and what they could possibly add whether it be now before Christmas or before the deadline uh, fun little thing I'm going to work on but this is what the Leafs defensive pairings are going to look like tonight Mark Giordano and Hall on the first line Mark Giordano is 38 39 years old I worry for his health because he's going to have to play 35 minutes a night sometimes, it feels like. But then you have Sandine and Lilligren, and then Jordy Ben, who's been unreal, but, you know, it's a long season. I don't think he's going to be able to do it every single game, obviously. And then you have Hollowell, Mac Hollowell. I believe he, he, he got called up yesterday. He'll be in there. I don't know if Mete's already up, but this group of six is going to have their hands full with a red-hot New Jersey Devils team who won again. Uh, two nights ago now, we are here Wednesday morning, and you invite New, New Jersey Devils bring in Edmonton Oilers, McDavid, and Dreisaitl, and you win 5-2. That is a heater. You got Hughes and Heischer working it up the middle right now. You're surrounding them by guys who are just getting it done. The Devils are also a team who don't seem to really hit a lot, but they're balanced all the way through. Vanacek standing on his head, and their speed, their quickness, their chemistry... They can put defend the, the other team with their head on a swivel just spinning around and looking at where the heck do we go. So that's going to look very, very good. A wounded team going in New Jersey tonight. It's going to be a lot of fun. Shout out to the Devils, 13 in a row. Incredible. Groomers take on the Leafs. Devils. Tonight. Great games.